And now I'd like to open this up for, uh, for you to share uh, just uh, special memories that you have, a way that this church has impacted your life, or um, the way God has used you, called you, uh, ministered for you or other people. Um, I'd like to ask if you have something to share that you stand up, and Tyler is going to bring a microphone around so everybody can hear um, what you have to say. So uh, I'd like to uh, speak to a program. Our minister said this morning that 68% of the people in Taze Valley uh, are not church. This church has been involved in the past 60 years in churching people outside this church. The program that I'd like to talk about just a second here is one that Ann Miller, Pete Miller were involved in when we arrived at this church many, many decades ago. Uh, Boy Scouts of America, Troop 283 and Pack 283. There's a number of people that's in this congregation that's been involved in that over the years. This troop still exists. Many, many young men in this community over the past half century have been touched in this program. And there's a few people I'd like to point out particularly. I was scoutmaster for years, followed Pete. Uh, Greg Duval. If you're going to advance in rank, you've got to be documenting all the good things that you've done. And Greg was the meticulous record keeper in this church for Troop 283. I really appreciate that very much. I want to explain that some of the things that this church has done, it not only was a charter sponsoring organization, but it housed geographic, or, uh, the facilities here that the troop was able to meet, still meets here, and financially supported that troop. How many young men have been touched and have had some kind of thing happen to them as a result of the program and the outreach of this church? With the Boy Scouts of America. Now, I want to mention two or three personal things about the scouting program uh, and some of our scouts. Many of you remember Pete and Bob Lillian, and you remember Scott, your youngest son. We were on a camping trip to Williams River, and lo and behold, if you know where the Williams River is up in the mountains, it gets cold. We got up there on Friday night and started. Snowing, a foot of snow fell, it got cold. I mean, very, very cold. Well, the scout is clean, so every night we had to have those scouts clean up a little bit before they went to bed in their tents. And then they hang their washcloths, wash rags from my old days, on the, on the ropes holding the tent. Got up the next morning, and here all those washcloths had frozen. Scott Lilly got out of his tent, he looked at his washcloth, and he picked it up off of that, and it was solid as a frying pan. And he went around the camp holding that thing out like that, laughing and showing everybody how his washcloth had frozen stiff. And he could just hold it out just like it was a cake pan, whatever. One time we were at the uh, Scout uh, camp, summer camp. And one of our young men, we always had boiling water to wash out our tin uh, uh, eating utensils because you don't want anybody to get sick. What we used, we go to the hardware store and buy a toilet brush, a big long toilet brush. And that was used to stick down that boiling water and clean out uh, your eating utensils. This young man would not use that because he thought it was a toilet brush and you weren't supposed to use that to wash your dishes with. So anyway, over the years, many people, like I said, had an impact. There's a, there's a crab apple tree down here that uh, uh, planted by our packs over the, that's about 50 years old. So the upshot of the whole thing is this church has and continues to have an impact. We just need to make that impact more forceful. But it's been a good thing, and lots of times we'll never be able to document what this uh, outreach activity had on some people, but it's had, I know, because we've had feedback over the past half century. 
Thank you, Ben. We have the Ingrams, Daniel Ingram, who's been uh, involved for I don't know how many years, many years. Uh, Jacobs and Bob and Luke and Sam, were you ever? One day. One day. <laughs> <laughs> we have some Eagle Scout projects, picnic tables that we, was done maybe a year ago or so recently. Um, the um, the uh, planters raised beds uh, for the manor. Uh, those were Eagle Scout projects. Uh, Bruce Davis uh, that involves a number of people, but thank you uh, for sharing, Ben. Uh, and it's a wonderful ministry to help shape the lives of, of young men. Was he the, at the wedding? Pardon? He, he was talking about the ministry of the scouts, Barbara. Okay. I think um, Sarah's next. Uh, uh, Tyler's going to bring the mic around to you so everyone can hear. Sarah, you've been around for a little while, haven't you, Sarah? Been involved a little bit. Well, if you look at me, you know I'm one of older than dirt. <laughs> I was secretary for 32 years, and I asked Cal if I needed to be nice with what I said, or if he wanted me to tell some bad stuff. <laughs> but he assured me I could be good. But I'll be brief. I was trying to think of how many ministers I was through. <laughs> and I think it's eight. But I couldn't even remember all their names. I know what they look like. But it's been, God sent me into this church for a reason. I loved every minute of it, almost. <laughs> but when I walked in today, I saw one of my happiest parts. It's Laura. <coughs> that dude. She was Laura Ball. And I hadn't been here very many times, and I was one of the back pews <laughs> sitting there. I didn't know anybody. And all of a sudden, between my legs, under the pew, <laughs> came this beautiful blonde little baby girl and she was born <laughs> the peace and I thought thank you Lord I am supposed to be <laughs> because all I had in my life was boys <laughs> and I loved every minute of it but I, I have loved so many people and lost them but He's kept me here for a reason. I'm not sure what it is, but as long as I can get here, I'll be here. <laughs> and we're glad. Um, I knew about you, Sarah, before I met you, before I came here, because I, when I was the pastor of uh, St. Andrew in Elkview, um, we got the church mouse, the newsletter with the church mouse in it, and I love that uh, the articles that you wrote then and, and are still writing today. So uh, Sarah's had a big hand in the goings on of this church as secretary and many other uh, things. But uh, uh, I knew about you before I knew you. <laughs> Nancy, Nancy Hill? I, I too was a secretary here for five years. Uh, I worked 30 years with Kanawha County Schools. I worked 10 years at the hospital, and then I came here for five years. But then when I started to having great grandchildren, I found it was a lot more fun playing with them. I bet. Um, this is a uh, just something to tell you when we talk about our community and what the church means to them. Um, when my daughter got married and she moved to Virginia, she got away from the church. And then when she moved back here, she lives in 
is Eleanor, and she is an elder at the Eleanor Presbyterian Church. They had a Halloween party last night for the community. They had 254 kids at this Halloween party last night, and they did have a ball. I didn't go. I go. But she called me as soon as she got home to tell me that there was 254 there. Mm -hmm. That was great. Thank you. Speak. Um, there's nobody that promoted this church more than Sarah, I can tell you that. I mean, she goes around the neighborhoods and homes, promotes, promotes this church, and also Nancy can do a Christmas tree decoration like nobody else did. I mean, hers were outstanding. But I would like to speak about the trips that we took in the van here and there. And one of the trips was to uh, Pearl Box home and uh, beautiful scenery all along the way, and then we had dinner out. But I was younger then, and I was in the van with a bunch of elders. And man, I, they taught me so much. I mean, I love history, but no book gave me the history that they did, because they gave me what they sacrificed, how they felt. It was truly better than any book I've ever read about. And uh, for an example, um, I, they were talking about the depression that they went through. And uh, they said how they survived was they all moved into a relative's home that was paid for. And then they all went out to work, trying to find work, whatever they could do. And whatever money they brought home, they put it on the dining room table, and that's what they lived on. Now, you can't find these memories, you know. And Linda Hansen's mother, I mean, she taught me so much in every conversation I ever had with her. I'll never forget it. Um, and um, it meant a lot. And uh, the camps, my girls went to the camps, and they cried when they left the camps because they had such a good time, the blue stuff, and didn't even want to come home and enjoy themselves so much. And I thank this church for raising my children. You did as much for them as me and my husband, Richard, did. Thank you so much. They're good citizens now because of all of you. Thank you, Sam. Well, thank you uh, for sharing. I think we, we can let them eat cake now.